Our service this morning begins on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer, also found in your service bulletin. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Pentecost. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us upon us. Together, glory be to God on high, and on earth peace to the will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us, that thou takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, that thou sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art holy. slaves 
and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work. He will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, No, but we are determined to have a king over us, so that we also may be like other nations, and our king may govern us and go out before us and fight battles. Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal, and there renew the kingship. So all the people went to, went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. There they sacrificed offerings of well-being before the Lord, and there Saul and all the Israelites rejoiced greatly. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. No one can enter a strong man's house 
and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemous they be uttered. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had asked, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. Are you crazy? <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> well, Jesus is crazy. Our gospel reading this morning says that when his friends had heard of all that the people were saying, I'm sorry, when his family had heard, all that the people were saying about Jesus, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he has gone out of his mind. Actually, the Greek text seems to suggest Jesus' relatives themselves have come to the conclusion that Jesus was pushing it too far. He was out of bounds, over the top, obsessed. Another translation suggests that Jesus was beside himself. Well, perhaps watching too many of those intervention shows on TV, they decided they were going to have a family intervention. <laughs> Being so driven about all this religious stuff, all the time hanging around with those losers and sinners, and playing like he was some kind of superhero fighting evil forces, well, he must be out of his ever-loving mind. Jesus is driven. He has God's missions, papers, and he has God's objectives, and he is single-minded and determined to accomplish his assigned ministry while making his way to the promised land of suffering and death. Time and purpose is of essence, even if it means missing a few meals. In a sense, Jesus is guilty as charged. In a world that sees things differently and that has very different values, Jesus is focused on God's will. He is focused on serving others. He befriends the marginalized and the rejected. He speaks of radical love, radical discipleship, radical forgiveness, and grace. By the world's standards, then and now, Jesus is crazy. And I'm going to say this. If someone has not said to you lately that you're crazy, then you may not be living fully into Christ or the gospel. I've been reading again one of Michael Curry's uh, latest books, 
you know, the Michael Curry, the Michael Curry that did the royal wedding. One of my favorite books of his. In fact, we did a whole Sunday school uh, on this book recently. This book is entitled Crazy Christians. He actually stole that title from one of my sermons, but <laughs> I'm not holding you that. In his book, Michael says, what the church needs, what the world needs, are some Christians who are crazy as the Lord. Crazy enough to love like Jesus. Crazy enough to give like Jesus. To forgive like Jesus, to do justice, love, mercy, to walk humbly with God like Jesus. Crazy enough to follow the radical ways of the gospel. Michael continues by saying this, pretty pointed. Sane, sanitized Christianity is killing us. Sane, sanitized Christianity is killing us. What we need are some crazy Christians, Christians who are crazy enough to at least catch a glimpse of the crazy, transforming, transfiguring, life-changing vision of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In our Old Testament reading, Steve read this morning, the elders thought that Samuel was crazy for asking them to put their trust and their affairs in the hands of God alone, that they could, they could not see really this invisible God. Instead, they wanted a visible king, which really they wanted a visible God, but they wanted a visible king that could lead them. And I love this part. <laughs> the scripture says that the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. They said, no, but we are determined to have a king. We're determined to have a king over so that we might be like other nations. Other nations have kings. Why can't we? In other words, other people are doing it. Why, why can't we? In our epistle lesson today, Paul sounds, he sounds a little crazy too. When he says, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. So who is our king? Who is our leader, our God, our model? What kings or gods do we actually serve, especially in this culture? The more visible culture around us, Wall Street, our political party, or even the so-called American dream. Do we put our trust in those things that are familiar or can be seen, which are temporary, or do we put our trust in things not always seen, but eternal. Jesus is not only crazy, but he's a thief. Interesting parable that we heard today. According to the very unusual parable in our gospel reading today, one cannot enter the house of a strong man and plunder or steal his property without first tying up the strong man. In this fascinating metaphor, Jesus himself is the thief. He's talking about himself. But listen up. He is the thief that robs 
and rescues those that have been ransomed by Satan. The parable clearly states that evil is real and God is at war with the principalities of darkness. The parable even recognizes Satan's ability to strong arm his captors. But God is the strongest as he can bind the devil and he can go in and take what is rightfully his. Satan is a terrorist. He is. He seeks to instill fear. He incites chaos and destruction. And he ransoms victims as prized possessions. But Jesus comes as a special rescue. Maybe we could call it special forces. And he robs, he robs the evil one of his ransom possessions and he sets them free from their bondage, you see. So he's only a thief in the mind of Satan, but he goes in, plunders, he takes what was Satan and takes it back to his own. As Paul says in our lesson today, do not lose heart. Jesus has had quite a successful career in this spiritual larceny, in this spiritual warfare over many years. And he has taken millions of people from the devil's stronghold and has brought them safely into his father's house. The parable, however, announces that we do live in a world terrorized by evil powers. We do. And those evil powers are always on the prowl. Sometimes when we least expect it. We should not be so naive to suppose that life can be a leisurely stroll on the beach when there may be landmines. Landmines of evil, ready to explode into the middle of our existence and our lives and in our world. Have you run into any landmines lately in your life? The good news, the good news of this gospel is that God has exerted his power over the power of evil in this world. And he is busily trying to bind up the, the Satan, to bind up the devil, robbing him of his hostages. So we can rest assured, this God neither slumbers nor sleeps. He's actively acting rescuing on our behalf. And you know, many of us need to be rescued. We need to be rescued from the bondage of our, of our sin or evil or even our poor discipleship in our lives. For some of us, our joy and our success and happiness and peace or in a sense held ransom by the confinement of our sin by the confinement of evil and sometimes our shortcomings. So let us, in a sense, signal our great rescuer that we want to be saved from our imprisonment. Being crazy in the Lord, being single-minded in our faith, being driven in our discipleship, including the serving of others and focusing on things eternal. Those are signs. Those are signals that we have secretly unlocked the door for Christ to come in. It's a, it's a flare. Come in to my life. Rescue me.
rescue me from this hold of Satan. Allow Jesus to come in and set us free. Set us free into eternal joy and eternal life. Do we conspire? <laughs> Do we conspire with the relatives of Jesus and this gospel story? Or do we become a little crazy ourselves, like Jesus? Do we become fools for Christ? Being a fool for Christ will bring God's saving grace to us every time. And also, it will bring about God's saving grace and mercy to the world. May it be so with us. Amen. 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 Now stand and say the Nicene Creed together. The Nicene Creed can be found on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service board. Together. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of
Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Pope Francis of the Roman Church, Michael, our presiding bishop, the bishops and ministers of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican community, Phoebe, our bishop, and Father Terry, our priest, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer <clears> thy <throat> holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Bill, our governor, and all mayors of Shelby County and the surrounding areas, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to thy hold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee in thy goodness, O oh Lord, to comfort and succor the Lucas family, Larry, Jennifer, Kate, Blaine, Rand Rudolph, Sherry, Larry, Sherry, Jason, and Holly, and all those in this transitory life who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life and thy faith and fear, especially Doris Lee Baker, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us faith, grace, so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Mother Mary and Saint Philip, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the West Tennessee Endowment Corporation. We pray for the West Tennessee Haiti Partnership Mission. We pray for the Village Mission in Liberia, Africa. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. We pray for peace among all nations. We pray for peace for our own nation. Amen. We pray for the protection and comfort of all those who serve this country in foreign and domestic lands, especially Jacob Stevens and Trevor Holly. We pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given today to the glory of God by the Stevens family in honor of Brittany's birthday. Let us pray for all members of our parish celebrating a birthday, especially Skipper Staggs, Vicki Rogers, Ann Browning, Lisa Namey, Gary Mullins, Brittany Stevens. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week especially Dedrick and Barbara Van Dyke, Ray and Jean Harville. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Give thanks for all the blessings in this life. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Our confession can be found on page 331 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. Together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most previously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly by wrath and invention against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the of life, to the honor and glory. 
in repentance, in true faith, turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy burdened, and I will refresh you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. service on uh, Wednesdays at 1210. That's a very special service. Uh, a great time for people to come and represent the church and, and of course our city, our country, uh, and the world as we pray for those needs. A reminder, if you call into the office, you may hear a, a different voice. Uh, we have a new interim secretary, uh, Betty Albert, has been kind enough uh, to help us out since Mara retired. Uh, we uh, continue to pray for Mara's uh, retirement of refreshment, and we hope she's having a great time even now. Uh, but in the meantime, there's work to be done here, and uh, Betty has graciously accepted uh, that role. A reminder, too, uh, to uh, continue, please, to stay close to the Thursday emails. And there may be some repetitive information there, admittedly, but there's also new information, and especially that's where you're going to hear uh, the change of protocols as we slowly unfold uh, many of these protocols that we have been uh, observing. Uh, Also, this is uh, Priest Discretionary Sunday, and so the first Sunday of the month, we designate uh, all additional funds, of course not your uh, pledge, but any additional funds will be given to the discretionary uh, fund. And you can write your checks and give money to that all during the month, but we particularly designate, and also so we just bring it to your attention, that the first Sunday of the month uh, goes toward this very uh, active ministry of St. Philip. Are there any other announcements? Yes. We presume having our men's club uh, meetings, and we're going to have it on the 17th. I know that's the third Thursday, but we're going to have the 17th. We're going to have it here in the parish hall. So please, uh, we had kind of a poor showing last time. We need to start ramping up again. And we'll send out notices for that. That's right. To let you know more details. But that'll be the first time that we'll meet uh, here at the church. And all the, all the fellows are very glad about that. Any other announcements? How about birthday celebrations? Do we have any birthday celebrations today? Okay, you'll stand in your places for right now. Let's pray. Oh God, our times are always in your hands. 
Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may continue to grow in your wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you both as you celebrate your life, your ministry, and life everlasting. Amen. 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 Happy birthday, <clears throat> kiddos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about anniversary celebrations? Do we have any anniversaries to celebrate? Remember the words of our Lord Jesus that it's more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive.
Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son has commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion, his precious death, his mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, thou save the blessed and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may attain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us our peace. We do not presume to 
come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in thy hand of all the great mercies. We are now worthy so much to scatter up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose part it is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Christ keep them into everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for thou hast seen us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, and that we are very members and corporate in the midst of the body of thy Son. The blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we only seek thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue with that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to name with thee and the Holy Ghost. Be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this Sabbath day, for your upcoming week, during our great Pentecost season, and forevermore. Amen. Amen.